I'm Marty Lafferty, and our next guest is Rachel Law. Rachel is CEO and creative technologist at Interface Foundry. She's a self-described interaction designer, as well as a researcher in data and user behavior. Rachel's past work includes visual design and art direction for a variety of agencies. Welcome, Rachel. Thank you, Marty. So tell us a little bit more about your concept of Bubbly. What is Bubbly? So Bubbly is a platform that aggregates cloud information and integrates with connected devices to give you a single universal feed that, um, that acts like a remote control for all your devices. Interesting. So you have a demonstration for us here. It looks like a, looks like a map of New York City with some buildings and so on. Yeah, so um, for instance, you can use Bubbly to, as a kind of tour function. Oh, great. So, Lots of people travel. Yeah. Sounds good. So for instance, my friend can send me a tour of the city. And let's say I start at the hotel. And I have 24 hours to like see everything. Okay. And then it'll show me like what's for breakfast, like what are the coming, what are, what's in the hotel itself, like the upcoming keynotes, and then or um, what's around the concierge. And then as I leave the hotel, like I get a notification from my friend, and says like, hey, you know, these are the things that you can check out within 24 hours. Mm. And then the first thing that I see is um, if I go to a park, there's a art piece that I'm really interested in looking at. Mm. And it'll give me like the, and then Bubbly will show like the different information about the, like about the step, about the sculptures, like who made it and then so where it's I, my located. My question is how, how does this personalization part work? How does it know what you're interested in as opposed to somebody else? So, uh, the personalization, we call it user personas. Um, they're basically slices of your identity. So you have like a work persona, a social persona, um, a shopping persona, and then like in this case, like I'm just a visitor persona. Mm -hmm. And then based on that, it can give me a list of things that I'm interested in. And this combines with what my friends think of me as well. And it gives me a list of things that I can go and visit and like events that I can see within the day. Mm -hmm. How, how does it tie in with the Internet of Things, which is what our webcast is all about? And how, and how does this geolocation part work? How does it know where you are? So let's say, like, in the park, I meet some really great people who are um, sketching, and, like, I just ran into them. And afterwards, we've, we're trying to decide where should we go for lunch next. And what I can do is I can post a geotag sticker in our um, geofence chat room and give a recommendation based on my friend. So my friend sent me a really great lunch spot, and then I can say, hey, you know, my friend sent me a really great lunch spot, let's all go there. These mm -hmm. geotag stickers help us figure what, so out. So that's a new word for us. What is a geotag sticker? What is, what is that? So these geotag stickers are um, basically chat room stickers, but with geolocation and time built into them. I see. So when you click onto them, it will open up back to the map as an index. So what we're trying to use is the map as an index and a way of navigating through the world. And then as people gather around the same location, they can find things together. Mm. So we go for lunch at the lunch spot that my friend recommended. And then once I enter the lunch spot, it'll show me like the menu, um, the service call, the bill, and like so it connects to whatever that's in the sure. lunch place. I got you. And then it, and then because I over, let's say I overstayed for lunch because I met all these cool new people, and I can I can get a notification on my phone saying, hey, you know, there's this performance that you put as a high priority. Um, do you want to go catch a cab now? Okay. Yeah. So you. The vehicle's connected? Is the vehicle a yes. smart car at this point? So no, it's not exactly a smart car, but what happens is when you get on, you can call a cab, yeah. and then you get on the cab, um, the car itself becomes the smart device. I see. Because you brought yourself I'm, I'm into the you. cab. Right, right. And then um, it shows when, as it goes down the city, it shows you what's interesting to you around the city, and then it offers other suggestions besides the ones already offered by your friend. And then when you get off the cab to the art gallery that you're going to see, um, at the art gallery, um, your device goes back to the original interface and shows you like who, what, where, when. Mm -hmm. And it tells you how to get, it shows you the local map and tells you how to get to the art gallery. And once you go inside the art gallery, it changes again. So it's Does it give you information nested. based 
on the location this time? Is that how that works? Yeah, it's location and time. So okay. because this is a performance, it's yes. really time-based. Sure. And then once you're in the gallery, it tells you please sign on your phone because the performance is about okay. to start. Okay. And that's something really useful because like uh, we get a lot of people telling us that you know during performances there's always someone with their phones yeah, ringing. Sure. All right. So what else? So after the performance ends, like. Um, you, maybe you want to go get grab dinner with your friend. You know, you spend the whole day around New York City, and then you've it's time. For, it's almost time for you to go. Right. And you know, since you're not in a hurry, you can take the bus. Okay. So you take the bus. And again, does this have to be a smart bus or this? No, it doesn't need to okay. be a smart bus because what happens is your device is like a universal okay. remote control. Oh, okay. It turns the bus smart. By because if we, you're on yeah, bus. because you're on it. Okay. You don't need a smart bus. You need a bus that is tailored to you because you don't want to know what the person sitting next to you <laughs> is seeing. Exactly. Right. You know. So the best way is that you yourself is the connected device and you yeah. turn things smart. So when the bus goes back uptown, it'll tell you things like your destinations, how many minutes to there, and then when you get off the bus again. You know, and then you go, let's say you go for dinner where the hotel is, um, yeah. you know, and it'll show you like the menu, how, what is the Yelp ratings. Because what we do is we want to become the platform to connect all these disparate data points together sure. into a single system. Excellent. It's cloud information as well as connected devices. So if the hotel has connected devices, it just becomes one single universal remote control. And then that's the end of the tour. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I have a secret to tell everybody. I really like ambient music. Like the really slow, sleepy kind that everybody just dozes off halfway through the end. And the problem is that is that most of my friends don't like it. They like noise, they like punk, and they don't like things that make you go to sleep. Well, which makes sense. Um, so the problem is I often go to concerts alone. And like concerts are really much better when you're with friends. And here's how, so that's why I have Bubbly, which is something that uh, me and my friend made together, because, and it helps bring people together using uh, Internet of Things. It's not a social network, it's more like a sociable platform. That's what we like to call it. So let's say I go to um, the concert, and the first thing that I see is my ticket, and then I can automatically scan through and then I'll go and find out where the, let's say, where the food stands are and where the concession stands are at the concert and it shows me a local map. And then later when the concert's about to start, it tells me how many more minutes and then where I'm supposed to stand. Um, and this is really great, especially for large concert halls like Madison Square Park. I always get lost at Madison Square Park because there are multiple concerts going on at the same time. And you know, in like a big concert hall, you know, you're sure that like somewhere that you can find a friend, but it's so big that it's hard to talk to anybody and everybody's all clustered against the wall. So what we have is this thing called geolocation temporal chat rooms. They're basically chat rooms that are pinned to place and time. So I can go to the concert chat room and then I can start chatting with people like just in the general public. Um, hey, you know, is there anyone there that's like interested in the same music as I am? Like, so my favorite band member is Sophia, and like, so are there any Sophia friends here? Do you like the Purple album? And then they could text back and say, yeah, you know, that's that's my favorite band member. And then I can pit, put a geolocation sticker, which on the local map, like of the Madison Square Park, and then say, let's meet here and then I can go there. And then it'll be like, hey, cool. I can't believe you like the same music as I do because most of my friends don't. But you know, it's nice meeting you, I'm Rachel. Nice, nice to meet you. And like, um, then afterwards we, can, uh, afterwards we can go to the concert together. So the purpose of geolocation stickers is basically as a way of using the map as an index point. Um, it's a way of bringing people together at a place and time so that you can, uh, people of the same interest can um, gather around the same spot. So in this case, it's like, I'm here, let's go go to the concert together. And then when we go into the concert, um, it starts and then we can each have different experiences on it. So as the music plays, it can show me like the lyrics in different languages. And then I can collect 
like the in, I can interact with what's on stage. So on the stage right now is the falling rain, and I'm collecting the falling rain from the stage. So here's where like you can tie what's a larger experience to a smaller and more intimate experience on the phone, um, and it helps concert goers feel like they're really part of the show. And then whoa, cool, you have that too. And then. Um, uh, and then as the interactions get larger, and then I have the tree as well, and after the concert, I can collect it as a kind of memento of that of my concert experience. And then collect it, and then once I've collected it, um, it's like I can exchange contacts with my new friends and be like, yeah, let's catch up sometime. Uh, next time and then afterwards um, I can go to and check the merchandise that's around the area and see like with my new sticker and see like hey what's the new merchandise in the store and that's a way of providing a kind of social connection with the internet of things but not becoming a social network it's about connecting people and their devices into a single intimate experience so that they really feel part of a larger experience and they really feel part of a larger movement and um, yeah and that's how and that's what bubbly is we're back with Rachel law for the third demonstration of bubblies and bubbles so this time Rachel what's a bubble so a bubble is a uh, uh, information and services pinned to a place or time where like when you walk into a place it shows you a specific experience so in this case let's say I'm making a bubble for my star I can add all the clothing items and then I can add my branding and then like what I want the type of experience to be. I want it to be a retail experience. I want a hashtag to it. So everybody who uses this hashtag, I automatically pull it up. And then I want a color palette and a specific map of my store. And this is particularly useful for really large stores that have four or five floors in them. Can any store use this? Yeah, any store can use it. You can use it for a pop-up store. You can use it for like a mall and then a, a store in a mall. So you can create like various experiences of, oh, you step into a mall and then you have one experience. When you step into a shop inside the mall, you have a mm. different experience. So the whole mall could use it or any part of the mall? Any part of the mall and, any, and, and basically any kind of shopping experience. So our platform um, caters to whatever that is considered an event. And um, shopping is also considered a kind of sure, event. Sure. So as long as for like large things like mall, you can use GPS. For smaller things like in a store, we'll use iBeacon or Bluetooth LE. Sure. So to give you the Local. best target experience. So I, I see you with a smartphone and a little wearable item there. Yeah. And I, so the rack of clothes. So what's happening? So uh, let's say I walk into a store and then it knows that I've been here for like several times. So I'm, I'm a member of the store and I have like VIP pass and it tells me that my loyalty has been rewarded so I get a 20% off. And then, um, and then I can slide to accept the uh, voucher okay. and then I can look at the so code. You, you get a coupon right on your... Yeah, I get okay. a coupon right there. So it's like on point, point of sale marketing. Wow. Yeah, I walk past the store, I immediately know that, you know, it tells me that, yes, this is a brand that I love, and then it tells me that, okay, it's got a flash sale. I want sale. you to come in. <laughs> yeah, so I come in, and then I can see, like, what's on sale, and then I can tap it to my wristband because, like, they have Bluetooth stickers on them, and then I can get reviews. So this one has a customer review of, like, four stars, so I think maybe I should wait for the next party. It looks pretty good. <laughs> But then, you know, there's this thing too, so, you know, I can just tap it and then I can find out more information. It tells me this one runs small, should I get it or not, I'm not really sure. Um, but I can slide to save it and maybe think about it mm -hmm. and then it becomes wishlisted for me. Okay. And then, and that works for any other thing that has a Bluetooth uh, sticker on it. And then if I, let's say, let's go back to the one that I think I'm going to buy and then I, I can, and then I can tap it again, and then it can tell me that since I'm going to buy it, I should pair it with a pair of Bison high top sneakers, because I think okay. it'll look really good with sneakers. Sure. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe <laughs> more dressy shoes. <laughs> I can pair this with a pair of sneakers, and then all, and then my entire retail experience, I can just take this with me and leave the store, and um, 
it'll, it'll go back to like, and then when I leave the store, it just automatically purchases it. Okay. How, how is the smartphone and this wrist wearable working together? So What's basically it works that um, it's device agnostic. Hmm. So you can use your phone to tap on the iBeacon okay. bracelet, or you can use your smartwatch to tap on your okay. I, on the um, iBeacon and it would still work. We're not linked to any specific device. Bubbly is a platform and so the bubbles on it are platform based mm -hmm. and we try when we believe in connected devices, we believe that it means that the platform works across any connected device. Sure. It is the connector for the connected devices. I, and I can see the benefits to the consumer, no question. What's it What's the business model for the store? What's in this for the store? So for the store, you have analytics. So let's say I bought this, and then um, it can tell me, thanks for buying it, and then I'll see um, see me soon. And I can take a picture of it and upload it to the hashtag that I've already made. But for the store owner, um, they can see the feedback. So let's say I say I had a great shopping experience, and then you know I go back to looking at Bubbly, and maybe I want to buy something else. And let's say, let's have a, you know, I don't think this is for you, so no, maybe we should find a royal. That, that one looks good. <laughs> maybe we should get you something like uh, more, like normal, like maybe uh, another tie, a blue tie, to, a glittery tie to match your suit. So I can go like, hey, uh, can I search for a tie to match your suit? And it will automatically show me like the map of where it is located in the next store. Okay. So maybe the tie is not here, but it's in another store. Probably not. <laughs> okay, yeah. very so, good. So um, that's, that's, that's for the consumers, um, even after the experience. And as a store owner, I can find out um, where the inventory is. So like for instance, the tie is in the next store mm -hmm. across, and that's where it's at, and we can go there later. I can find out the feedback that I put slid on my wristwatch, and then I can find out um, how many people bought this, who bought what, and then how many, and how was the experience overall. So was it a loyalty member who used this experience, or was it a first-time visitor who bought m which of what kind? And this is really useful for a business Absolutely. owner sure. because, like, it's analytics, but it's analytics that doesn't intrude on personal privacy because we're all using personas. Right. Does it help them manage their inventory in the store, or is that is it more of a consumer focus? Um, it can use it can be used both ways. We call them admins and users, mm -hmm. but they're basically that's all kind of uh, that we have different experiences for yes. both. So for the admins of data bubbles, you, um, we have analytics, and then we we have inventory tracking. Um, as long as they have like the Bluetooth stickers, right. you can just tag them onto the sales tag. They work like your RFID kind of normal sales tags. And, and as a consumer, can I have more than one shopping persona or just? Yes, you can have as many shopping really? personas as you like. You can say like, now this is my persona for shopping for wine. So please give me the most relevant discounts for, you know, when I'm shopping for groceries. Mm -hmm. Please give me the most relevant discounts when I'm shopping for like party clothes. And please give me the most relevant discounts when I'm, um, maybe I'm out socializing with my friends and I want to like go to a great restaurant. and. It's making uh, making personas is free, just like making bubbles are free, because we believe that like um, for the Internet of Things to grow, everybody has to get connected together. Yes. And the only way to get connected together is to have a platform that connects everybody. Thank you. Thank you.